Hey, how's it going guys? It's Funkify here yet again for MMOBomb.com and welcome back to yet another First Impressions. Today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Dirty Bomb, which is a first-person objective-based shooter. It's being developed by Splash Damage and published through Steam by Nexon. Now, Dirty Bomb uh, has been in development since about 2012. Splash Damage originally announced it then. It went through some sort of like development hellish period where it was changed, the name was changed, and then we didn't hear anything about Dirty Bomb for a while, but then it changed back to Dirty Bomb. Uh, so now we're kind of left with the closed band in its current state, and I actually got a sort of ability to try it out for a limited amount of time, and I wanted to give you my early impressions of the game. So far, things are looking pretty good, so that's good if you're a fan of uh, objective-based shooters. But if you're unfamiliar with Splash Damage, they actually, they're sort of the kings of objective-based shooters. They've been doing it since the early 2000s uh, with Return to Castle Wolfenstein. They then went on to make Quake Wars, uh, which of course is based on the Quake series, uh, before making Brink, uh, which didn't fare as well, and now Dirty Bomb. So Dirty Bomb is the first variation, or first free-to-play variation, I should say, uh, of their sort of tried and true formula making these uh, different objective-based shooters. And with all their objective-based shooters, uh, the core mechanics are the same. You have an attacking side and a defending side, and then you have sort of classes, or in this case, mercs, uh, which act as different variations of gameplay depending on how you like to play uh, your shooter. So. In this case, you have uh, the support types, which are something like the Merc here, the RD Merc. He has access to the ability to throw in ammo packs for your allies, as well as to call in artillery strikes on enemies afar. And then you also have the, the flip side of that, which is the Aura, or Medic. Uh, they're able to, of course, heal their allies. This one can place down a healing station and also revive downed teammates there, provided they aren't shanked before they're able to be revived by these medics. Now, there are in total 15 mercs available in the game right now, and each of them also have different rarities or variations. The way the cash shop works in the game, uh, or the way it will work once the game goes live, is similar to Dota 2 or CSGO, where you get these mercs in packs, and the packs you open up uh, through the game shop using like keys, if you will. And these allow you to get different variations and rarities. Uh, depending on the variation, it may have a different primary, secondary, and tertiary weapon, and then different augmentations. And on these augmentations here, if I look at load, I can see this. If I click on here, these augments here, uh, these are usually things like, you know, that dictate your re reload time, how much ammo that you can carry, how many ammo boxes that you can uh, assist the allies with. In this case here, it reduces flinching when hit while iron sighting or scope by 50%, reduces the damage you take from explosives, and increases the maximum number of magazines that can be carried. This guy has access to a shotgun and a secondary sort of submachine gun as well as a knife, uh, but different variations of Fletcher here will have different weapons. So you can see if I just click over, these this guy here has a complete different primary weapon and then completely different augments to go along with that. So you get to start off with these basic variations and then as you continuously play and get these boxes and unlock these boxes, you'll have different uh, sort of rarity versions that you'll uncover and can uh, slot in instead. So just to give you an example of two different ones here, for Skyhammer here, again, this is another sort of support style class. He has access to the ammo pack. And then I also think he has access to the call-in as well. It's just not displaying here. But if we go to loadout here and I click on the one that I've unlocked, this is an epic one. So he has a different primary weapon and secondary, and then he has quick draw, 45% reduction to the time taken to raise and lower, increases the amount of ammo packs by one, and improves any repair tools and disarm rates by 20%. Now for those of you thinking that, oh man, this is clearly pay to win, this is an epic level you know, ability guy, he's gonna have better abilities, he's gonna have uh, better weaponry, etc. From what I can tell so far, and this is just so far, but from what I can tell, that's not so much the case. Uh, here's the current normal version of him. It's got a different weapon, as you can see here. I haven't been able to test really whether or not this weapon feels less powerful than the weapon on my epic version of him. But he also notices, you'll also notice that it has extra supplies here, which so it's 25% cooldown reduction to support abilities. But then my second and tertiary augments are the same. They're exactly the same. So in reality, the only difference here is what weapon I have and then what primary augmentation. So do I want 45% reduction at the time taken to raise or lower, 
or do I want 25% cooldown reduction to support ability? So do you want to be more personalized or do you want to be more team based? And that seems to be the case with most of these different loadouts thus far. Again, need more time to play around with it, to play try the different classes and the different weapons. Unfortunately, there's not a really easy way to see what um, weapon damage a particular weapon does. You kind of just have to play with it and see for yourself. But a lot of these classes are also this unique in their own. So Bushwhacker here, he has access to a minigun turret that he can place down. And then you have Nader here who can actually use a giant grenade launcher as her unique ability. Um, same goes for Rhino. Rhino and Fragger are both kind of the tank style classes in the game. Uh, Rhino has access to a pretty hefty shotgun, but then he also can bring out a minigun. Whereas Fragger here has access to a machine gun and can throw grenades willy nilly. Um, grenades aren't necessarily available to all classes. Some classes have their own explosive types uh, or types of explosives rather. Uh, for example, Proxy can put down proximity mines, uh, but overall each class comes access or comes equipped with something that will be beneficial to themselves as well as beneficial to their teams. So Red Eye here is a sniper. He has access to smoke grenades as well as an IR goggles. It says goggles, but he only has one goggle there, so it should be goggle, which allows him to spot enemies through that smoke and tag them for their teams. But all right, enough talking about that. Let's go ahead and get this started. So I've already sort of equipped my loadout. You can bring up to three of these different guys into a match at once. I'm gonna bring Phoenix as well, because I tend to like Phoenix here. I'll go ahead and place him down right there. I'm trying to think of all the different threes I can bring. Uh, let's keep it going here. I can bring a sniper. I'll go ahead and toss that. I'll keep Red Eye here. I've got a different Red Eye version that uh, replaces his semi-automatic sniper rifle, which is this one, as you can see, the battle rifle, with uh, the automatic, or sorry, uh, bolt action sniper rifle, which should be able to do one-shot kills if I get a headshot, uh, and we'll see how well I do with that. All right. So, there's two modes of play currently, uh, objective mode and stopwatch mode. Objective mode is basically just a more casual version of stopwatch. In stopwatch, each team takes turns attacking and defending, and then the shortest completion time or furthest progress wins the match. And that is a ranked mode that allow you to you know, compare rankings with everybody else. Objective mode is kind of jump in, jump out style of play. Uh, it's the same style of play, but only one team attacks and one team defends. They don't switch sides at the halftime. So, Let's go ahead and see what's access. So there's not very many people online currently, unfortunately, mainly just for the fact that the beta is going to end tomorrow. So let's go ahead and try to jump into a match with a little bit more players here. As you can see, there's still an EU server going on, but 159 ping is not really the best when it comes to uh, doing shooters. So we'll try to jump into this 12 on 12 and six on 16. So we'll just join a server and then we'll cut back as soon as the game starts. All right, guys, managed to find myself in a match. Now, I've been doing pretty terrible today, so apologies ahead of time if I ended up sucking hardcore. But in this area, you can see your uh, team versus the enemy team. In this case, I'm on the attacker side. Uh, the defenders are listed on the right-hand side. I think I can join them. I kind of want to be a defender. Or maybe not. Maybe when it's even like this. And then you're also able to choose uh, whichever of your mercs want, uh, are going to be comprised in the sort of squad that you have going. Once you've chosen these mercs here, they're locked into place and uh, you're stuck with them for the entirety of the match. Let's go ahead and switch. Oh man, I wanted to switch from Aurora to something else. But I've got the Nader, uh, Rhino, and Aura. So Aura is of course going to go be my go-to medic. I kind of think everybody should have a medic or some sort of support in their uh, squad at all times. Nader is, or sorry, uh, Rhino is acting as my tank. They have additional health. They're slower, uh, those larger, more bulkier mercs, but they, they act as good tanks. And uh, Rhino there has a pretty powerful shotgun as well as a nice minigun that he can pull out uh, to deal a lot of consistent damage. And finally, Nader is, of course, a, not Ralph Nader, <laughs> is a, a source of uh, a lot of AOE damage, especially good for clearing out objective-based areas where people are huddled in. So in this area, we got to destroy the wall and then can destroy the containers. And the map does a good job of sort of highlighting where you have to go and what your objectives are before the match begins. So as you can see there, our objective was to, it doesn't say it looks like it bugged out, but it'll initially say that your objective is to destroy that wall and then go and destroy those containers. Again, each map has different objectives. Uh, and then different si secondary objectives, which would be things like in this case, uh, to power this generator. So if I actually follow this line here, there'll be a generator in, the, in another room up ahead that if I turn that generator on, uh, will gain access to a whole other area that I'm able to, to access. Lots of grenades going off. There's a guy that came up here, I noticed. 
Looks like he ran across, maybe. Where'd he go? Maybe he's already dead. I was for sure I saw someone go up there. Got some people shooting at us from somewhere. All right. That guy got res. This was one of the objectives we've already uh, finished up. Uh, there's additional ones we have to do farther up, but there's also this area here that if we capture this, uh, we'll get the forward spawn. Hey, how's it going? Shoot some grenades over there. Ah, yes, forward spawn captured. Nice. All right. I'm gonna keep moving up here. Now we gotta destroy this wall. Oh, there we go. That's why this is so great. Flash damage indeed. All right, so wait to heal up just a little bit here. You heal a little bit over time, but really it's very, very useful to have your own uh, healer to uh, assist you with. All right, so there's a mine right there. Going to take that out. Go back to the grenade launcher. Now my special, I have a special sort of post-death thing which allows me to uh, basically perform martyrdom. So if anybody runs up to me when I'm in this state, I can blow up and uh, like this, boom, <laughs> and kill someone. So <laughs> it's really nice to have, especially if you got a lot of guys crowding around you at that point. Uh, nader is definitely going to be useful when I come up. And typically, you don't want to spam all your nades at once because you can see there's there's quite a long cooldown uh, between getting other uh, nades uh, back in your. There's not really like a, a reload system for those secondary nades. Like the Rhino, it's just kind of based on cooldown. Throw some nades over there. Hoping to get some kills, doesn't look like it. I keep running up here on the right hand side. There we go. Making some headway now, all right, all right. I'm curious to know if, uh, if you stand over like uh, ammo boxes, if that actually contributes towards your, your cooldowns on things like grenades and stuff. I think anything with explosive tends to have a fairly long cooldown, relatively speaking, especially artillery strikes, which do a massive amount of damage for pretty much no investment on your own. You just kind of throw it down in an area, and, and then you do <laughs> loads of damage right there. This side's good. Right, so just basically gotta make sure that if I die, I die near this, that way I can perform martyrdom and just blow everybody up. So far, so good. People, lots of people up above. There's that guy. One down. One guy. Splash damage over there. There, I got that guy too. Good, good, good. This is one thing that does worry me a bit. It does seem like uh, splash damage from like grenades and stuff is just so strong. Because not only, it, it kind of does two things. It, not only does it, um, not only does it like almost instantaneously kill the person, uh, but it also destroys their body, which means that they cannot be revived. So it makes them really, really strong. Anything with it, with uh, explosive grenades, uh, or you know grenade launchers, also the mines as well that, that the uh, proxy can place on the ground. They're, they're really strong, and I get the you know, reason that they have like a, a long cooldown. But even so, like for example, the Nader, maybe they need to reduce the amount of grenades, or maybe the damage that they do. Because I understand that you know you want to spam grenades. That, that is your, that is your objective is to spam these grenades. But they seem to do so much damage, and people are clumped up, it just destroys them. There's a guy over there. The load will come, alright, or we'll come to the right hand side. I love the fact that most maps have two or three ways that you can get to an objective. So here's another one of those uh, secondary objectives here that we've been filling up here. It looks like it's some kind of uh, extraction. That way we can get this tertiary. Yep. So but usually this area would be filled with like a liquid, like a hazardous liquid, radioactive material, if you will. But since we have those objectives actually con uh, constructed now, we're able to uh, come in a third way, which is really awesome. Just throw a bunch of grenades over there. Looks like I got destroyed by my own guy. And he shot me from afar, so that way I wouldn't perform a martyrdom, which is very smart of him. How are we doing here? I'm doing not so great. We're actually moving up here. Well, they killed each other. Which is nice. Right, I'll uh, 
come up in four seconds. I'm going with Rhino this time, just to be a little bit more up in the, 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 the battle, you know, take a little bit more damage here. I have found that on some maps, uh, it seems as though the, the player defender spawn is too close to the objectives. Uh, this map, not so much, uh, but I'd say out of all the maps, at least two or three out of the currently available five or maybe six maps, I think, they have. Alright, let's just... Oh no, came from behind. Clever girl. Five and three, I'm still positive. All right, here. They've got a lot more higher level players on their team. 26, 22, 19, 16. And really, a higher level doesn't mean, you know, they've got better equipment. Maybe they have a couple of uh, packs that you don't, but it does definitely come down to skill and knowledge of how to use each of the, uh, the different uh, mercs effectively. When to use their secondary abilities, the best places to place certain uh, of your secondary abilities, especially if you're using like proximity mines and such. Alright, I'm gonna run up here to the side. Looks like we did get one. Thank you. There we go, got that guy. That was pretty poor play, I should have just knifed him to begin with. Let's see if I can get this plant. And 14 seconds left to the next uh, spawn. Oh, I could not get him in time. Now they're gonna go in there and unfortunately disarm it. I don't think any of our teammates are near. Looks like Kudo Chop did get two people. But they're pretty close to the disarm, unfortunately. We really have to move in as a team. I mean, I cannot stress that enough how important it is to have a team in these kind of games. Solo wolfing it can work, uh, but you run out of ammo unless you know, since you can't heal yourself very quickly, and ammo is really, really scarce. Like, I cannot, I cannot, uh, whoa, they can shoot me through that with grenades? Oh, okay, you're shooting me from a, well, what an angle there. I was like, how is your grenades blowing up through the wall there? In 17 seconds, that's a long time uh, in a shooter to be down. That's why it's important to team wipe them uh, as a group and keep your other allies alive. Overall, the game is is it's quite fun. I mean, it's definitely arcadey. There's no recoil in any of the of the guns whatsoever, really. Um, there is bullet spray, and you do notice the bullet spray, especially with things like the minigun from Rhino and such. Uh, but recoil is almost non-existent, which means that you're, you don't really have to zoom in so much. A lot of people just do strafe fire like this. Uh, when you strafe, you don't move as quickly as, say, Throw that grenade down there. Boom! Sorry there, buddy. Let's kill that. All right. Yeah, let's mount up. See if we can get some kills here. <laughs> get that guy too. Fair enough. Get this guy on the wall. Man, I cannot kill them faster than my MG shoots them. Looks like I got some splash damage in there. We needed to push in though. Quad kill? Man oh man. I'm liking that. Shoot that over there. In case there's a guy up there. I'll learn from my previous mistakes. There we go. Plant the C4. <laughs> Get out of here! Oh, martyrdom. There we go. <laughs> uh, when all those fellas just blow yourself up. I think we actually got one planted so far. We could really use the other plants. Come on, stay on it, guys. 20 seconds. It's a long plant. It's like 40 seconds or so. It's like th at least three waves, two to three waves of respawns. Oh, they're gonna get it! Ah, oh, man. Hey, look at that. I'm second now on the team. 
So yeah, typically this is like the hardest part uh, out of any map that it has. You're either going to be tasked with destroying something or you're going to be tasked with transporting like a package somewhere. And when you transport a package, you actually don't have access to your weapons. You can hit them with the package, uh, but it's, I think it's almost the equivalent of like knifing someone essentially. It does look like you run almost your maximum speed, uh, which is nice, but you are entirely dependent on your uh, allies. Uh, get out of there. I think we're gonna get this one because I blew him up. I think we're actually gonna get one of them. 10 seconds. Keep it down, guys. Keep it down. Two seconds. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my god, can you not, can we not just like focus on that one thing? Look how many grenadiers they have. Maybe it's just the, the, the grenade class that seems a little bit, you know, overpowered right now. But you see so many people are playing it. I'm playing it. There's three guys on the enemy team playing it. And like I said, maybe that's like the, the key thing there. Because I just, I just feel like it's so good on both offense and defense. You have so much, you have so much power. Look at me, look at that. I could just do an absolute crazy amount of damage there to everybody. And I went from being like one of the last to one of the first just by playing this class. So definitely some balance issues with some of the mercs. Um, and I do know that you don't get all the mercs out the uh, out the gate, so you will have to purchase some of them, uh, which I would wish it would do like say the the Dota 2 style thing where you get all of the baseline mercs for free, and only when you want the different variations, you know. Come on, yeah. All right, he's gonna die. And only when you want the different variations do you actually have to, to pay for the packs. That seems like it would make the most sense to me. Because I don't think people... I think people will argue that there's certain uh, mercs that you really need to have on your team. You, you can have an, imagine having on your team uh, no healers. Oh yes, we destroyed both containers. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well done. We've won finally. Holy crap. So I ended up being 20 and 9 just by playing pretty much strictly the Grenadier, or the Grenade class, if you will, the Grenade Mercs. Uh, at the end, it breaks down your score based on objective, based on your kills. The Nader, that's what it's called, of course. Nader, of course, how can I forget Nader? Nader 2012, right? And it shows you the breakdown of how much experience you get per class that you played. So as you level up these classes, you'll unlock other augments. So uh, I think the general gist of it is like when you start the game, you have your different mercs. They're going to start at level one. Maybe they're going to have one augment to them. And those other secondary augments that you said the, in, in that you saw when I showed you those, those will come later on as you continually uh, gain experience and, and level up. So you see the review here, how long it took for each of the different uh, sections. It took three minutes for the first, pretty quick, and then eight minutes and 40 seconds uh, for the secondary one. So quite a long period of time here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the match now and just show you a couple of the quick other things real quickly uh, with the UI in general. Like I mentioned before, the uh, current setup for all the mercs unlocked is just for this particular closed beta. Going forward, they're going to be more locked to you. I don't know if they're going to do some of the rotation system found in uh, other games like League of Legends, or they're going to have like a set sort of like starter set of mercs that everybody gets access to, and then from there you you gain extra ones. But you're able to see all the different news and uh, your stats, <laughs> your stats here. I was way better in stats before I started playing for the video today. I am quite uh, embarrassed by my lower than one KDR there. In your profile, you're able to see your current level as well as your favorite weapons, how many headshots to get. This is a pretty good breakdown of all your information. And of course, you can even edit your clan tag. So you get a lot of stat breakdown. Uh, and so if you're really a, a fan of that in your shooters, you're gonna have quite a deal of this. Uh, I only wish that they would add, and hopefully they will add, uh, the ability to see how much damage each of your weapons do, and what the, what the recoil, there's no recoil, what am I talking about? What the maybe damage fall off rate is, if there is one, and all those different kind of stats. So that way you can make a more uh, informed decision of which of the different sort of variations of a particular mech, or merc, you want to play uh, if it's if it doesn't really matter to you what are the augments if it comes down to like what are the weapon types so that's really my only criticism of course map design and balance need a little bit of tweaking there's some maps that are still only gray textured and haven't been fully fleshed out I assume those maps are still in testing uh, but there are definitely some tweaks need to be had maybe with where objectives are versus where spawns are and those kind of things uh, for before the game ends up going into full launch. 
But yeah, that's going to be my first impressions. Overall, pretty solid. I've been a fan of Splash Damage's game since Enemy, you know, Territory, which is during the Wolfenstein 2001-2002 era. So hopefully this is it translates into a, uh, a good first-person shooter, objective first-person shooter uh, experience. I just hope that they can balance out the grenade spam just a bit because it does seem anything with objectives where a lot of players are going to clump to is going to be uh, prevy to a lot of nade spam like that. So as long as they can balance that out and make it a little bit more fair to the attackers so they're not just getting blown to bits by a competent team, I can definitely see this game uh, going pretty far. All right, guys, that's been my first impressions. A lot for you to digest. Hopefully you like it. If you want to learn more about Dirty Bomb, go ahead and check down below at mmobomb.com for the full game profile. As I said, the closed beta ends soon, so look for the next closed beta event to begin sometime in the near future. And stay tuned for MMOBomb for all that information. Until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Smugify out. Later, guys.